My name is Matt Broderson, and you might have heard the news that my grandpa just passed away. His name was Dr. Charles Stanley, and he was the most important man in my life. I wanted to make this video addressing the fact that my grandpa passed away so I could share some of my most favorite memories with him and some of my most intimate conversations I had with him. Uh, having Dr. Charles Stanley as a grandpa is a huge deal. I've struggled with drug addiction and alcoholism, depression, and loneliness. One time, I actually ran away to California to try to make it big as a YouTuber, and I had completely wasted all of my money and resources on smoking pot and getting distracted by things that don't really matter, so I didn't even make it. I was super depressed. For the first time in my life, I was actually suicidal. So my grandpa called me and he told me, Matt, your mom told me you're not doing too well and that you're thinking about killing yourself. On the phone, he said, I just wanted to tell you, why don't you just give Jesus one more try? So I was in LA trying to make it as a YouTuber, uh, addicted to pot, and I was an alcoholic, and I couldn't stop drinking, so I couldn't really get much work done. And I was struggling with loneliness and depression, and then I get this phone call from my grandpa, and it meant the world to me. And it was a very short phone call. All he wanted to say is, Matt, I heard that you're struggling, and I just think you should give Jesus one more try. For some reason, that phone call really inspired me. I had given up on Christianity. I had given up on my faith at that point. I decided, okay, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just going to give Jesus one more try. So I drove home from California to Dallas, Texas, and I decided to give Jesus one more try. That phone call was basically life-saving. But still, unfortunately, my story is that I got addicted to drugs and alcohol, and uh, my life went way downhill. And my grandpa was kind of always somewhat disappointed with me, but also he loved me. He always loved me. He called me all the time. Uh, me and him were very close. And he never stopped rooting for me, and he never stopped cheering for me. And our last conversation is kind of funny. I go to this church, HPUMC, in Dallas, Texas. It's Highland Park United Methodist Church. The pastor is amazing. They preach the gospel there. Paul Rasmussen and Matt Tuggle, they do an amazing job at HPUMC. One of my last conversations with my grandpa, I was actually having to convince him it's okay that I go to a Methodist church. He was very serious about his faith. He was very serious about this one-liner he had, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. That one-liner really helps me throughout the day sometimes because it reminds me that I'm not in control of everything and that I just need to trust that there's a higher power who is taking care of me and watching over me. And if I let fear get into my life, fear can just absolutely destroy me. And fear takes me and leads me back to drugs and alcohol. So obey God and leave all the consequences to Him is a one-liner that actually helps me stay sober because it's kind of saying... Quit trying to deal with things myself. Quit trying to deal with my emotional trauma and all these things myself. Give it over to God and let God deal with that for me and let God be a part of my life. And that way I can actually experience healing in a spiritual and actual supernatural way. I can experience healing and grace and love and forgiveness while I'm in my room alone all by myself. So if you're wondering, is God real? Is Jesus real? Is all this stuff real? A lot of people have given up on their faith. A lot of people don't go to church anymore. People are like, oh, we've, we've figured it all out. Christianity is a bunch of BS. Well, my testimony is, I don't think it's BS because I can be in my room struggling with loneliness or struggling with feeling bad about myself or self-pity. Then I can acknowledge God and I can acknowledge Jesus and what he did for me. And immediately I can get this feeling of warmth and cleansing that I'm forgiven of my sins and that I'm okay and that there's someone up there looking out for me who even though the world is a mess and the world is crazy, there's somebody out there looking out for me and I just got to trust that I can put it all in his hands and that everything will be okay. And that gives me a sense of relief. And I have access to that relief all by myself at home. So when people say, is it real? Is Christianity real or is Jesus real? I'm here to say, listen, my experience is when I'm freaking out about something, I have access to relief if I'm willing to just Consider the idea that God is real and watching over me. My grandpa would want nothing more for me to go spread the word of Jesus after he passed away. So I did want to take this time to just tell you guys, my experience of getting sober from drugs and alcohol has been a total mess. Uh, I'm a chronic relapser. I've got lots of 
I've got lots of issues. Talk about having issues. I have bipolar problems, depression problems, loneliness problems. I've got all these issues, big time issues. My life is an absolute mess, but my grandpa never gave up on me. My grandpa always rooted for me, cheered for me. He would help me financially. He would help me with phone calls and conversations. My grandpa is one of those people that never stopped believing me and always has cheered me on. So in a way to honor him, I kind of just wanted to make this video and share some of my intimate, most favorite experiences with him, some of my favorite private conversations I had with him. I feel like I can do that to honor him because he has so many fans that are so desperate to know when I tell them that he's my grandpa, they always want to know what is he really like? What is he like behind the scenes? What is it like being related to Dr. Charles Stanley? Is he really the same guy that you see on stage? My grandpa's the real deal. When he would preach his sermons, you got the best example of someone who is genuine and being the exact person that they are behind the scenes. Hanging out with my grandpa behind the scenes is exactly like hanging out with him when he's giving his sermons. He's just as funny and charming. He's just as smooth. He's a good listener. One cool opinion my grandpa had, for example, is when Jeff Bezos sent the rocket uh, into space and people were complaining, how dare Jeff Bezos use all this money to send a rocket into space? My grandpa said, no, uh, Jeff Bezos can do whatever he wants because that's his money. He made that money. He can do what he wants with his money. That's his money. My grandpa is kind of an OG. My grandpa's an OG. He's got one of those attitudes that's kind of back in the day, like, listen, stay out of my business and I'll stay out of your business. Can we just respect each other? That's what I like about my grandpa. Another one of my favorite moments with my grandpa is when we were on this cruise together and is when we were on this cruise together and there was a talent show night where anybody could sign up to show off whatever talents they wanted. So I was going to go up there and do stand-up comedy. And I was in the room with my grandpa and I came up with this joke that I had. And I said, uh, what do you call Dr. Charles Stanley on a boat? Holy ship! And he did not like that joke at all. He looked at me and he said, Matthew, you do not go on that stage and tell that joke. <laughs> And so I did not go, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't end up going and doing stand-up comedy. My cousin Andrew is actually a touring stand-up comedian. You guys should go check out his work if you're watching this video. Uh, Andrew Stanley is an up-and-coming comedian. He's definitely one of the greatest and latest, so please check him out. Another moment I had with my grandpa that was really special is that he gave me my first video game system, which was one of the original Game Boy Colors. As a little kid, I was going to my grandpa's house for Christmas. I was so excited. And then we had the best gift of all. I'll never forget this moment. It's when I opened up the package and I got a Game Boy with the Pokemon Yellow version as a present. And that was one of the greatest toys I ever got because I played with it for hours and hours and hours. Pokemon Yellow version on the original Game Boy Color kept me satisfied for years. Because back then we didn't have so much access to all these video games. We only had access to like a few video games or whatever you could get your hands across and you had to have physical copies of the games. So when my grandpa gave me the Game Boy Color and I got the Pokemon Yellow version, it was really a big deal. Another defining moment in my life with my grandpa is when I was a senior or junior in high school and I went to go hear him speak at the seminary that he went to in Fort Worth. And I was so moved by his message and I was so wrapped up in all of the awesomeness that I was experiencing there that I said, you know what? I want to go to seminary and I'm going to go to this exact same seminary just like my grandpa because I wanted to follow in his footsteps. But then I go to that seminary school and it's right next to TCU. Instead of focusing on all the things I probably should have been focusing on, I ended up partying at TCU a little too much and got into some bad stuff and that's when my life started to go downhill because I became a drug addict and an alcoholic. So I transferred from the Southwest Seminary Program to TCU and then I became such a mess that I actually had to transfer out of TCU and I went to Samford in Birmingham, Alabama, a little Baptist school, awesome school, that's where I graduated from. But yeah, there was that one time I actually tried to follow in his footsteps and go be a pastor and he was so excited and I feel like I kind of disappointed him but he never gave up on me though. That's who Dr. Charles Stanley is. He doesn't give up on people. He actually, when you're hanging out with him, he'll talk about how amazing 
all of his employees are. You go hang out with him, you go sit with him, and literally half the conversation is him telling you how amazing his maid is, he's telling you how amazing his employees are, he's telling you how amazing his grandkids are, he's telling you how amazing his cousins are, he'll be telling you how amazing the Uber driver is, he'll be telling you how amazing the waitress is, he'll be telling you how amazing the restaurant is, he'll be telling you how amazing basically everybody is. That's what my grandpa did, that's who my grandpa was. He focused on what was good about people. Hanging out with him was such a positive experience every time because he focused on what's good about people and he focused on what he liked about people. He focused on what he liked about institutions and organizations and he didn't spend so much time thinking about all the negative things about things that he didn't like about other churches. Hanging out with my grandpa, he wouldn't go talking trash about other churches. My grandpa spent a lot more time talking about the churches he did like and the pastors he did like and the movements he did like. Another thing I really like about my grandpa is he became a huge fan of Jordan Peterson. So here Dr. Charles Stanley is, he's getting older and older and older, but he never stopped being in touch with the current times. My grandpa always wanted to have the newest iPhone, he always wanted to have the newest camera, he always wanted to have the newest tablet, whatever was coming out, because that's how his brain worked. He wanted to be in the current times. He wanted to know what's the latest and greatest next technology. And I think that's really cool. So here's something really embarrassing. After I had ran away to LA and then rededicated my life to Jesus, uh, I got a job at a church and then I was actually caught drunk at work at this church. So see guys, I've really struggled in life. Uh, I just want to put that out there because I'm the kind of person who's an open book. I'm willing to say like, yes, I have st I've had so many struggles. If you're struggling with drug addiction or alcoholism, I want you to know you are not alone. And the best thing you could possibly do is go tell somebody. So I come back from California. I had just tried to become a famous YouTuber and totally failed because of my drug addiction and alcoholism. And I have this rededication to Jesus moment where I go get this job at this church and they were very nice to me. And I thought I was just going to do church and be dedicated to Jesus. And then I would stay off of the drugs and alcohol. And then I decided I wanted to go to seminary. So I signed up and went to a semester at DTS. But unfortunately, my relationship with God wasn't what I thought it was. See, I was delusional because of the drugs and alcohol. So while I'm going to church and while I'm going to DTS and trying to become a pastor again because I wanted to follow in my grandpa's footsteps, I also wasn't dealing with ego problems I had, self-centered problems. I wasn't dealing with emotional trauma from my past. And so even though I was at church and even though I was working at a church, even though I was going to seminary, I still ended up relapsing on drugs and alcohol. And my grandpa paid for my semester at DTS. And then I dropped out after one semester of seminary. My first day in seminary, I had already relapsed on alcohol. And so my first day in seminary, I was actually drunk while I was moving into DTS. That doesn't say anything bad about DTS. DTS wants you to fill out these forms and say, you agree to this and you agree to that. I lied about everything. I lied about it all. This says nothing bad about DTS. This is all on me. I was a manipulator and being manipulative and still in my addiction. But my grandpa paid for my tuition at DTS because that's the kind of person he is. He wanted me to be a pastor. He never gave up on me. He always believed in me. He always encouraged me to do the next right thing. And then I dropped out of seminary and I disappointed him again. But but he never kicked me out of his life. He never said, oh, Matthew, I'm done with you. He never said, oh, Matthew, I'm giving up on you. He would call me and say, Matthew, I love you. He would call me and say, Matthew, please get back on track. My grandpa was that kind of person. He didn't kick me out of his life. He never stopped inviting me to stuff. My grandpa's the kind of person who, when somebody is down in the dumps, he goes and reaches out to them and constantly reaches out to them saying, you've got to come back. You've got to get right with God before you die. You've got to get right with God before something terrible happens to you. He would try to warn me that if you don't get right with God, you might actually screw up your life permanently somehow and then go become homeless and go down the gutter so bad that you don't ever make it back. That was my grandpa's love language and I really appreciated it. He never stopped reaching out to me. He never stopped loving on me. He never stopped calling me. He's by far one of the greatest grandpas somebody could ever have. Dr. Charles Stanley is the real deal. He's one of the greatest grandpas anyone could ever have. And I cannot explain how grateful I am to have had him as a grandpa. That's like the greatest, most ultimate, awesome gift that God could possibly give someone other than salvation itself, is to have Dr. Charles Stanley as a grandpa. Okay, I lost my train of thought. 
but I wanted to share the next story I had with my grandpa because I'm just going to share these stories. In his final days, I would sit with him out on the patio and we'd look at birds. My grandpa loved birds. He loved bird watching. He loved bird feeding. He loved nature. He loved all of God's creations. He liked to photograph birds. He liked to photograph mountains. He liked to photograph anything nature related because it's all made by God, our big creator. It's like the most ultimate form of art. And my grandpa liked to photograph that art. So I would sit with him on the patio uh, this is when he was kind of so old that he couldn't do much and we would just sit there and look at birds and talk about Jesus and talk about the Bible, talk about the current political state of the nation and all the issues going on and we would look at birds and we just had a great time relaxing together, being family, having community. And even after everything I put him through, making all these mistakes in my life, he never stopped inviting me over to his home and we would sit there and watch birds and we would talk about God and he would try to redirect me saying, get off the drugs and alcohol, basically. <laughs> like, get off the drugs and alcohol. Like, why are you still doing this? And um, it meant the world to me that I would get to sit there with him and just look at birds and relax on his chairs in his house. It's one of the most meaningful moments of my life. And I wish that everybody could experience what I got to experience. Hanging out with Dr. Charles Stanley alone is a magical experience. He's exactly the guy that you see on stage. When you have a conversation with him and you're taking turns talking, you get little snippets of sermons, basically. Everything he says is like a little snippet of one of his sermons. And it's not because he's trying to preach at you or preach to you. It's because my grandpa, that's just who he is. He's, he's the living, real deal, walking example of everything he preaches. Or maybe he preaches what he practices. Whatever you want to call it. My grandpa is the real deal. He has all these stories of people who helped him financially right when he had nothing and needed help. And as you guys know, uh, there's these people that were put in his life who helped him right at the right moment to get from here to there to there. And then his career blows up and he becomes one of the greatest pastors of all time, one of the greatest televangelists of all time, one of the greatest radio show pastors of all time. And it's just cool to think about how Every little step of the way, God was leading and guiding him to doing what God knew he was going to have him do. He has all these crazy stories like that where people just helped him. And really, I want to take the time right now to acknowledge that was God helping him. That was God leading him and guiding him to do what God wanted him to do. My grandpa has done so much for me to help me get my life going. And I've screwed it up over and over again. I keep screwing my life up. Nothing ever seems to click. And he never gave up on me. So now I'm left with this question. How can I live my life to honor my grandpa the best I can for everything he's done for me? So now I'm left with this question. What am I going to do with my life? Because after everything my grandpa did for me, after all the times he helped me, I, got, I feel like I need to pay him back somehow or pay it forward, as they say. And that's why I wanted to make this video, because I know there's a lot of fans of my grandpa out there who are going to be experiencing some nostalgia and some emotions about the fact that he passed away. I want you to know I'm with you. You're not alone. We're in this together. Now I want to challenge you guys to ask yourselves, how can you take part in continuing the momentum and energy and passion that he had for Jesus? How can you take part in keeping that going? Because this is a significant moment, the fact that he's passed away. I think a lot of people are going to come together rallying around and reminiscing on all the good times and all the lessons that Dr. Charles Stanley gave us. I think we should all ask ourselves, what are we going to do to keep that momentum going? Life and death is a weird thing. And being a human is a weird thing. It's a, I mean, it's strange that we're having this human experience. We didn't ask for it. We didn't know that we were going to have it. We didn't know that we were going to be made. It's like we just showed up one day and it's like, whoa, I'm a human being. That's why I love this shirt. Trust the process. It comes from OnSite, which is an amazing organization. We're going to get through this together. I'm here to say I love you guys. Thank you for being fans of my grandpa. Thank you for watching all of his sermons. Thank you for showing up at church on Sunday. Thank you for donating to his ministry. Thank you for everything you've done for my grandpa. Because everything that you guys did for my grandpa actually then had an effect on me. So my life, I should be dead right now. I should be dead because I screwed up my life so bad. Drugs and alcohol totally destroyed me. But the fact that you guys supported my grandpa so much actually gave him the ability to support me. And so I would like to take this time to say thank you. If you're a fan of my grandpa, you have had an effect on my life as well. My life is better because you're a part of it.
Being related to Dr. Charles Stanley is like one of the greatest gifts you could have. I'll say it again, I'll say it as many times as I want. And the reason that it's so great, it's not just because of all of his sermons, it's not just because of all the phone calls, it's also because of all of his fans who have come up to me so many times telling me what a great person he is, and they ask me, what is he really like? And people are so satisfied to know that he's the exact same person that you see behind the pulpit as to when he's just hanging out with friends in a casual place. So the fact that you guys have been such a big fan of him has made it even more fun for me to be related to him because when I tell people I'm related to Dr. Charles Stanley, they tend to freak out. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's the greatest pastor ever. I'm like, yes, yes he is. He's definitely one of the greatest pastors of all time. So I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been a fan of my grandpa. Thank you for watching my video. I love you guys so much, and I hope that God will bless you today to have an amazing day. But I want to say one last thing again, is ask yourself, what can you do to keep the momentum and the passion and the energy that my grandpa built for the worldwide church of Jesus, what can you do to keep that going? Because my grandpa really got a lot of people hot for Jesus. My grandpa really got a lot of people hot for church. He's like the best example of what a pastor could be in church because he would give these practical lessons that you could take home and immediately your life would get better because you had heard one of his sermons. So I want you to ask yourself, what can you do to be more like my grandpa? I'll tell you what I'm going to do today to be more like my grandpa. I'm going to meditate on the phrase, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. By meditating on that phrase, it does have an impact on my life and it does affect the decision making that I do in my day to day business. So consider doing that. Consider meditating on my grandpa's favorite phrase if you want to honor him. Uh, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. I know I've been rambling. I just keep rambling and rambling. Uh, it's a little overwhelming, but uh, I love you guys. I love my grandpa. He's in heaven. He's with Jesus. We can all celebrate. Dr. Charles Stanley has finally made it home. He's finally gotten to meet his real dad today because his real dad passed away when he was really young. He never got to meet the guy. Now, today, he gets to meet his real dad. He gets to be in heaven with Jesus. And he's probably up there right now having a great time. I promise you, I'm going to do whatever it takes to honor my grandpa, to become a better person, to become less selfish, to become less self-centered, to become less manipulative, to become less of a drug addict and alcoholic. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to honor my grandpa. And I wish and pray that you guys would do the same. Thank you so much. My name is Matt Broderson, and I am truly grateful to be the grandchild of one of the greatest men that have ever walked this planet.